It's the 1st of May. We're going towards Piccadilly Gardens. I've got my personal bodyguard here with me. Good morning. Hiya. It's my personal bodyguard against the crackheads. On <laughs> Market Street, Piccadilly Gardens, Central Manchester. It's the 1st of May, May Day. Not Cinco de Mayo, that's in four days' time. The lockdown continues, there's no end in sight. People are saying June now. But back in March, they said May. It's May now. It'll be July next. August, world's ended. The virus has taken over. And the big news today, we're going to go and explore, have a look around. Greater Manchester Police. This one's for you guys. This one's for you guys. You've not become a police state. You're still very tempered, very discretionary in what you do. And my favorite part, you've cleared out the crackheads from the city center. I'm here filming. I'm not looking over my shoulder. I'm not going to get attacked. It's, it's, it's the Shangri-La. It's utopia. It's beautiful. Let's go see what we can find in the city center anyway, because you viewers, you're not just here to see Mr. Peace, Randy Pan, the peace man. I thought a lot of vulnerable people walking around and some comments on my last video, angry at me for calling them crackheads, for labeling them. Well, let's just tell the truth here. Compassion without the defeat of the demons inside the individual you are being compassionate for only encourages the demons. All right. The person needs to break down and beg for forgiveness before you can forgive them or help them. Otherwise, you're literally giving energy to the demons that have a stranglehold on their soul. You know what, for 10 years I did my pre-lapsarian videos. I was predicting it for a decade. Yep, yeah, revolution's gonna come, end of the world, end of this civil society. It's all bullshit, it's all gotta come down. The, the energies are too weird, the vibrations are too nasty. And here we are, 2020. We are now in the lapsarian times. Now, I'm having a lot of thinking about what kind of videos am I gonna make in the post-lapsarian times. Now, it's all a LARP, really, because it's not really collapsed yet, so you can't really run around like you're in a zombie movie or an Armageddon or one of those other ones. Deep Impact. Woo! There's a slightly Freudian name for a disaster movie, Deep Impact. So we're walking into the northern quarter now, and the theory here is, is just to show you, you know, six, seven weeks in, um, just how fragile the economy is, how allegedly fragile the environment was, Turns out all it took was a two month break and the environment would go back to normal. Sorry, Greta. How dare you? So it's just surreal. Let's turn the camera around. This there's a bus, a couple of men in high vis, but that's it. Usually on the Friday afternoon, there'd be thousands of people here. My lovely uncle, 76 years old, his name was Marcos Torres. Um, he was taken into the ICU with uh, COVID-19 symptoms, got tested, got confirmed, and he died 24 hours later. Very pissed off, very sad. Just a, a week ago, I did a memorial video from one of my good friends who died. There's a lot of death going on. It struck someone close to me already, so... Yeah, there was a time for mourning. I just wanted to tell you all, because it's relevant to these videos. You know what? Most people who were abused as kids do not become child abusers. Most people who grew up in an immoral, nasty, abusive home, violent or crime-wise, don't end up becoming criminals and violent. But a good proportion do. Now, I have sympathy. Of course, it's, extre it's a tragedy, the thought of young children being abused by their parents or their uncles or neglected, which is just as bad as abuse the absence of love. So, you know, I can understand on a rational level why someone might end up as a crackhead wanting to self-destroy, wanting to blow smoke, crack smoke, into toddlers' faces as they go past. It's the same energy as you see these cunts on, on YouTube, on Twitter, licking door handles, spitting on the tubes, spitting at each other, trying to spread the, the virus. And like, those are low-level fucking arseholes, man. Like, the really clever, uh, hateful monsters who hate humanity, they get jobs in biolabs. They get jobs as virologists, as, uh, you know, as people that tinker with the genetics of viruses. Those are the real assholes, not to go too deeply into the 12 monkeys plot. Turns out they were releasing the zoo animals. It wasn't Brad Pitt with the virus. Oh, fuck me.
In As I was saying, if you're still in the phase where you're processing the terrible things that happen to you and you're then turning it around and doing those terrible things out to people, you might be too far gone to be forgiven and helped. You need to work through that so that someone can actually reach you and show you that good does exist. Morning, it's the 2nd of May, Saturday. We're here at Wigan Pier. Behind me, this um, is a, a Wigan Pier Canal building built in 1777 when America was one year old, just like my son. And it was renovated in 1984 and renamed the Orwell, obviously after George Orwell, which is pretty cool. Right, here we have number one Wigan Pier. This is the original terminus again built in 1777 You can see some modern boats have been inserted there, but you know in the uh, Leeds and Liverpool Canal one of the main ones. There's obviously uh, Orwell house this would be their 16th century equivalent of a major airport Of course, it's a canal canal port or terminus to use the Latin we are here in central Wigan, in Greater Manchester. Obviously, you've seen Wigan Pier. And again, these nice old 100, 200 year old buildings all boarded up. You know, we've had the decay of the end of the modern society for the last 50 years, 100 years. And what we're seeing with the absolute shutdown with the coronavirus is the decay and the end, the apocalypse of the postmodern world, the postmodern world which gave us battery chicken humans it gave us economy before ethics dealing with China Chinese Communist Party it gave us nuclear weapons it gave us biological weapons chemical weapons regime change the postmodern world you thought the internet was going to turn everyone into profound knowledge hungry intellectuals but it's not people are inherently the way they are you can't change them and society progresses. Let's go and have a look down here. Turns out, I thought I'd never been to Wigan before. I have been to Wigan before, and I recognize that little park over there. Let's go have a look. These are the old courts in Wigan. Wigan's quite a nice place. You've got your church, you've got the courts, and I think this is interesting for all my American viewers. You know, those, uh, those lapsed British people who uh, cut off from the motherland in 1776. Well, this building is for you to enjoy because I know you don't have anything like this. Maybe in Massachusetts or Pennsylvania, but you don't have old world buildings like we do. So enjoy. People are very frustrated now. I mean, day 39 or day 40 of the British house arrest quarantine. The reason I'm here in Wigan is, uh, well, why not Wigan? <laughs> and uh, also just to show you guys that as per the last video, you should really be making decisions for yourself. The individual is always sovereign to make decisions about their own safety. Uh, no one has the right to keep you at home to protect your safety. There is a murky gray area argument about the lives of others. They even uh, made a film with that title uh, about East Germany and it won an Oscar, uh, the lives of others. So ultimately, as the film was trying to get at, as I'm trying to say now, there comes a point, you know, and if you're a reasonable human being, yes, you give your government 30 days to stop everything, to get a grip on the situation, to see how the hospitals are doing, to see if our National Health Service is being overrun. And if not, then, well, sorry. You can have as much coronavirus legislation as you want. You can write anything you want on a piece of paper. You can write down on paper that your, your, your bum cheeks are made of diamonds doesn't make it real. I have seen a lot of fear in the masses around. There's a lot of bad energy going on. Um, if 
well, I consider myself quite psychologically resilient. If I'm struggling to cope with all this bullshit, can you imagine your, your average-minded person, just uh, your salt-of-the-earth human being? They're all starting to get a bit mad. There's a lot of aggression. There's a lot of bad energy. Um, a woman snapped at me in the park yesterday, walking my baby for, for getting my phone out and slowing down. People are being nasty. It turned into a fuck you shouting match. Uh, the other day in the car park, I was exercising my kids, you know, because they get bored as well. They're on their bikes and they've got this little, you know, that electric thing called the hoverboard. It doesn't hover. It's not a Back to the Future 2 Marty McFly thing, but it's the hoverboard. So I was there in the car park and this woman with her two adult children started doing a big L and a big red L in the front of their car driving lesson in the car park and I went up to them very politely I said I'm so sorry um my five-year-old and my seven-year-old and my baby in the pram they're here cycling and hoverboarding could you please not and she's like do you need the whole car park I'm like well they're a site I can't control how much of the car park they use and if an accident were to happen you wouldn't feel so good and then she said two two very bad things she then goes oh you're gonna play at that game are you and then after I said, um, you know, you wouldn't be happy if an accident happened with little children, she actually said to me, she goes, I'm insured, it doesn't matter. So I, I kind of gave her some abuse and walked away, thinking she'll see sense as little children in the car park. But no, her hubris, her, her savagery was too much. She got her 18-year-old daughter in the car, and they started cycling, they started driving around. So I got my phone out, started filming her car, and... Yeah, you'll see what I had to say to her. Now, in this country, giving someone a death threat is illegal. But I had to threaten this woman and her adult children. Hypothetically, I said to them, and I think you'll see this in the video. I said, if you injure my children, I'll kill you all. And I meant it. There's no joke there. There's no hyperbole. There's no exaggeration. There's no posturing. If I've warned an adult, well, a group of three adults, twice, three times, please don't do this here. It's a danger to my children. And they proceed and they injure my kids or they kill my kids, hurt my kids. Two things would happen. I'd make sure the kid is okay. And I would leap in that car. And I, I don't care how long I go to jail for. I'd hope for a good uh, jury, manslaughter for sure, killing three people with my bare hands. I'd, I'd have done it. They hurt my kids. Five years in jail, it's worth it though. You know, these people need to learn. You can't go around threatening kids. Anyway, this is the madness I'm talking about. I suffer from it, everyone suffers from it. This is Charlie Beach in Central Wigan, 2nd of May, <laughs> signing out. Forgot to add one thing, just reviewing in my mind, talking about that lady and her adult kids, you know, the horrible incident. Before my blood started boiling completely, she actually said one more thing which triggered me and I think this is what led to the the extremity of my language. Um, I said, I said, come on, you, you, you're not being serious. You're not going to ride here, the little children. And she actually said, it's all right. There's a paramedic station there. Implying what she was saying to me is, fuck your kids. If they get injured by me enjoying my driving lesson, fuck you. There's a paramedic station there. They'll look after your kids. That's when I snapped and got the camera out. So let's watch the footage. See these people just had a word with the mother she's teaching her daughter how to drive there's my children who are playing here and she's decided it's still safe for her to learn how to drive please don't learn how to drive when my little children are playing in here if you injure my kids I'll kill you all I will if you injure my kids I'll kill you all yeah yeah when you see these videos or tweets or photos of British police acting like little Stalins, little twats. It's never from the north. It's never from Liverpool or Newcastle or Manchester. It's always down south, like Cambridgeshire. Okay, Derbyshire is not south, but it's not north. It's Midlands or something. And the last one which ground my gears was um, an image of two tents in the forest. No one around, miles away from everyone. And it was evidence of adolescence. Two people, I think they said in the thing, they decided to go camping in the middle of nowhere and the police found them and issued them with a warning and took their details. And then Derbyshire police posted the photo 
of the campsite. Fucking pigs. Morning, ladies and gentlemen, 3rd of May, Sunday, 2020. Day 41 of the British lockdown quarantine. We are walking through a nasty, ugly, unesthetic shopping estate built probably in the 60s by the look of it. It's brutalism without any architectural joy or pleasure or niceness. Just want to do a video. You don't necessarily need to stare at my face though I am handsome, eloquent, and quite clearly an alpha. Although I do make some of you wet between the legs, today we're just gonna walk around and film the ugly world, which is being replaced by the COVID-19 disease. The old world we were in, if we describe it, the most successful, in inverted commas, nations, the West, NATO, South Korea, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, obviously included in the West. People have become very depressed. The existential despair that affects every single human being, if they have the intellectual capacity, does not go away just because you've got a million dollars in the bank. It doesn't go away because you have a safe pension. It doesn't go away because you're good looking or, or sexy or everyone wants you, everyone wants to be your friend, everyone wants to have sex with you. The despair is still there. So we have rising levels of wealth as well as rising levels of inequality, funnily enough, but that comes with rising levels of wealth. If you're not gonna cap how much money people can make, then of course some people are gonna shoot straight up into the stratosphere of wealth. So you've got that. But en masse, people don't believe in God anymore. En masse, with my generation, you know, Generation X, early millennials, the propaganda has been so strong in terms of climate problems, in terms of the environment, that they've managed to convince otherwise healthy, successful, decent Western people to not have kids. The most basic, fundamental aspect of reality, I'd say. You know, if one thing reality can and will do, it's it will carry on. The only physical manifestation of infinity you have is to actually pass on your genes into your children and then they pass on their genes into your grandchildren and so on throughout the generations and it's a beautiful symphony of mixing surviving winning and so forth so it's quite clear that the coronavirus and the way it either came from a laboratory it's a research gone wrong or whatever it is with natural whatever yeah doesn't really matter at this stage it will matter later on when you do the forensics to try and figure it out you know if you want to sue people or do criminal proceedings but right now it doesn't matter where it came from what matters is that a tiny parcel that's neither alive nor dead it's a replicating bit of code has <laughs> torn through society and it shut down ugly pathetic clown world and maybe you're like me maybe you felt it coming maybe you knew that the world was destined to end somehow and I'm just very thankful it wasn't through all-out nuclear war although that's that may still come The politics of this virus are getting very interesting in terms of personal sovereignty, individuals' sovereignty versus the collectivist desire to save the lives of the elderly, the vulnerable, the immunocompromised, those who are ill. And as I said in my last video, the British way out, yeah, you can have, you can have a month, you can have two months, or in our case, you can have three months since the 
actually four months now since the worldwide global emergency was declared by the WHO in January. And anyone that is urging others to go back to work when 90% of work is endless arrays of battery farmed human beings. It's where you go when you don't know what you want to do with your life. You go and work in an office, an office with bare walls and stunted soul people. You go there into your factory farm, your battery cage. You type away on your Excel spreadsheet. You make your phone calls. You send your emails. You take part in your meetings. All this whilst being fed the propaganda that kids are bad, the future is bad, human beings are bad. All we needed to do, it turned out, to save the environment was just switch everything off for three months. And in my personal opinion, fuck it, keep it all turned off forever. Modern life was rubbish. Modern civilization was not worth it. It's time we try to live peacefully with the animals. And it's time we stopped this disgusting rape and pillage of the planet in terms of resources, in terms of mining, in terms of deforestation, in terms of chemical plants all over the third world without any environmental laws. Dumping lead, mercury, heavy metals, poisons, bleach. And it's not just third world people. Remember Union Carbide? Was that in Bangladesh or India? Fucking five, ten thousand dead from a chemical plant. There was that Dutch or German-owned company in Brazil where there was a mudslide that wiped out a whole village of like three thousand people. And turns out they weren't following the law. So the old world was shit. The old world was demonic. The old world was not worth it. Which is why out of the ether, out of nowhere, a patch, a software patch was brought in by the creator, by the software developer. And that small patch, all it had to do, all it really had to do was kill a small percentage and the majority, the vast majority, the other 97% or 93% that didn't get killed by it they would all bow down to the seriousness of Corona Chan. The world is bowing. The world is now taking it seriously. The world is now fucking making big piles of body bags. We now have secret locations in England, ice rinks, other secret locations where they are storing big piles of bodies. And the British government's excuse for having a secret body pile facility is that they did not want journalists to go along and take photographs of it. Now that's a really weird excuse. Just to come out blatantly and say, oh yeah, we're going to keep uh, really important uh, public news secret from you because we don't want you to really know or, or to see it. Mm. Times of crisis, times of war, times of apocalypse, times of Armageddon, the truth is the very first casualty. We see the utter proliferation of conspiracy theories online. David Icke getting banned from Facebook, YouTube. And as is always the case, the little mini demon worshippers like David Icke or people who are really into conspiracy theory, they're going to be screaming from the rooftops, feeling vindicated and validated. Ooh, Facebook and YouTube had to remove David Icke because his ideas are correct and dangerous. No, nope. allow me to be Mr. Randy Pan, the smashing down your unintellectual bullshit man. But the real reason Alex Jones and David Icke are removed is for the fear of litigation, of being sued, of lawsuits. You know, like you host the David Icke who says the virus isn't real. You get some young fan who works in a care home. He goes to a house party, gets infected. He goes to a care home, kills 20 elderly patients, sorry, residents, 20 el And then it gets traced back. The police get involved. 
it gets traced back to a video of David Icke saying the coronavirus. It gets traced back to a video of David Icke saying the coronavirus isn't real. It's Bogdabots. Sorry, it's nanobots. It's nanotech. It's depopulation. It's ID 2020. It's Bill and Melinda Gates. It's not real. They're fucking with you. And so the young man goes to his house party, shags 20 women without a condom, picks up fucking the Wuhan flu, the Shanghai shivers, kills 20 care home residents, and it gets traced back to a David Icke video, which YouTube was hosting, hosting, most popular video sharing platform on earth here, have David Icke, the, um, conspiranoid schizo fucking maniac telling you that it's actually non-ionizing radio signals from telecommunication towers giving you the covid symptoms so yeah it's not because um they're scared of his ideas it's because um you know you host things which can get you sued you have to take them down so again for what it's worth David Icke, you're a fucking idiot. And may God have mercy on your soul. Having met you a couple of times, spoken to you, you actually believe you are a reptilian? You, this, is, this is the world David Icke inhabits. He thinks he is a rebel, reptilian, bursting through the interspace dimensions to come and save us humanity from his evil fellow fucking reptilians. He thinks he is like the John Boyega stormtrooper character out of the new Star Wars movies. Changing sides. Now, <laughs> coming back to um, coming back to the virus. Um, for the first six weeks, <coughs> for the first six weeks, I um, enjoyed the difference of it. The the lockdown aspect, the quarantine, the fact that, you know, all of a sudden, seven billion people having to question their existence, question what they're here for, when it's not to do with work and career and success and football and soap operas. You know, I'm going to wrap this up. I think we're on about 13 minutes coming up, plus the other videos I shot. So, fucking hell. Let's end on a brutal truth. Bru, 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 brutal truth. That excluding the Schrodinger's carriers across society who could or could not hold the virus. When you look at just the most basic numbers of how many are infected, about 3 million, how many have died, quarter of a million, it's not looking good, guys. It's not looking good. But other than that, to end on a, a really positive note, I do believe we inhabit a moral universe. I do believe in the ideas of German idealism. I am an avid follower of the philosophies of Baruch Spinoza. Baruch. There's a good Jewish name, Baruch Spinoza. And Spinoza was living in Amsterdam in the 1600s, 1700s. And you should read, this is how you know he was onto something. You should read the letter of expulsion from Judaism that the local rabbis produced. And it's there on his Wikipedia entry. Now, Whilst we're on the Jews, we saw that news in New York. There was a big Orthodox wedding, gatherings, people going on, and they weren't arrested. And then you had the mayor. What's his name? I, I don't know the governor's name, the mayor of New York. Sending that tweet out, singling out the Jews. Fucking Jews in big numbers, being free. Now, looking at the stats, Jewish people seem to be quite heavily... They am affected by the virus. Very strange. Um, it's uh, ironic because uh, in, in previous plagues and outbreaks and so forth, the Jewish communities, because of good cleanliness and 
the rituals of washing hands a lot, that was a, a usual, a good protector. But because this virus is airborne, it's not so much to do with uh, washing your hands. Anyway, we were going to do a, a lovely long video. Oh, look, it's just gone red for the car, so let's just wait here. I'm going to do a lovely long video. Just calm. Calm in the Sunday morning madness. And to end on another note, we ended on mortality. We ended on Judaism. But if we want to end on deep, deep, profound philosophy, ultimately, on an infinite timeline, on an infinite space-time continuum, you are actually so free to do what you want to do. You are 100% free to go out, to have fun, to fight, to go to war, to have sex, to get jobs, to quit jobs, to punch people in the face. Of course, you know, there's, there's repercussions. There's, you know, <laughs> things will happen back to you. But your freedom is also tempered by other people's freedom. Everyone else is free to punch you in the face. So what I'm trying to get at with this is um, don't get caught up in the low resolution soap opera online of am I allowed to do this? Am I allowed to do that? Am I allowed to drive to a park and have some exercise? Even entering that low watt gurgling retard conversation you are putting yourself at the mercy of that sort of discussion. Live free you don't need to justify your actions to anyone. There is a straight line going up that connects you to God and a straight line going down. A straight line going down that goes straight to hell. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the Creator. You are the Jesus, the Jesus, the Jesus Christ figure. You are the Buddha. You are God. Now, if you, now this, this partly explains why my channel still gets, you know, like, it's great. Like, we've been, over the last eight weeks, I've been, um, I guess, losing a lot of viewers who uh, don't agree with me anymore, and that's great, that's fine. But what, uh, hello, good morning. But what fascinates me is the, the quite sizable chunk of people. There's like 20, 25% of um, all my videos, 25% of my comments are negative, 25% of the likes or dislikes are dislikes, and you'd think that the people who don't like the videos would eventually leave or, or not watch, but I'm like a sore tooth, they just have to keep touching, ow, ow. So, it's funny, it's my haters, I guess, they need these videos most of all, but they'll be able to comment, oh, fucking idiot, oh, your hair's thinning, you're going bald. Check it out, check out how thin it is. Check it out, check it out. Anyway, for the lovers, for the good people, for the people that enjoy the videos, thank you. And it's a goodbye from Isaac as well. Go, Goose.